Is it going to be a cold and snowy winter where you live this year? I'm meteorologist Tucker Antico, and we're breaking down what you can expect wherever you live in the U.S., whether it's going to be a cold winter, a mild winter, whether you're more likely to see sun or rain or even a lot of snow. We're breaking down the big picture pattern as we head into the winter of 2024-2025. The Climate Prediction Center recently released their forecast for this winter between the months of December and February. And you can see that temperature forecast right next to me here. It's pretty clear to see the trend they're getting at. Uh, they're expecting colder than average weather in the northwestern U.S. for the most part and warmer than average weather in the southern and eastern U.S. Again, these are forecasts relative to average. Obviously, the, the south is always going to be warmer than the north, but it may be uh, extra mild in the south and a little extra harsh in the north where you're seeing these forecasts made. But also, these are probabilities. They're not necessarily saying that Florida is going to be much warmer than average. They're just saying there's a better chance that Florida is warmer than average uh, relative to somewhere like Kentucky here. Uh, so that's what the shading indicates. But clearly, right off the bat, you know, you would think that there is a better chance for snow relative to average in the northwestern U.S. We can also take a look at precipitation here, too. And this actually looks pretty similar to our temperature forecast we're getting from the CPC as well. In areas where you're seeing uh, expected warmer than average conditions, we're also expecting drier than average conditions, mainly in the south. We're not seeing it all the way up the east coast, though. And in the north, uh, especially closer to the Great Lakes, we're seeing an above average chance for precipitation this year. Pretty similar to where we're seeing uh, that expectation for colder than average temperatures. So again, right off the bat, relative to average, I mean, the South doesn't get much snow, but this is really sort of making those chances look quite slim. In the North, perhaps if you've missed out on snowy winters, especially in the Northwest, this should be getting you a little excited, at least if you like the snow. But I want to talk about why these forecasts are being made too. And I'm going to take you to uh, ENSO, which if you've heard of El Nino and La Nina, this tells you uh, basically what is more likely to prevail as we head into the winter. And what you're seeing on this chart, you know, I'm just going to go over the, the simple stuff here, is our general uh, consensus goes a little bit farther down the chart. And you can kind of see on the bottom here, um, we're looking at December, January, February is this window right here that I'm highlighting. Let's kind of see at the bottom of your screen, see the DJF. That is our average for the winter months. Now, when that line dips below, um, you know, a half degree here, uh, that means we're looking at La Nina conditions. What is La Nina? Well, simply put, it's colder than average or colder than average surface temperatures in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of South America. We could talk forever on how that impacts our weather and how the connection works, but more or less, I just want to make the point that that is the pattern that is going to prevail as we head into this winter. It's a weak La Nina. It's not a strong one, but it is certainly what begins to prevail. And we're going to begin to see that La Nina prevail as we even head later into these uh, fall months. But especially in the winter, a La Nina, a weak one, is expected to be dominant. So what does that mean for our weather? Well, in the winter time, this is sort of the pattern that we get out of La Nina. You can see the jet stream. It actually, it sort of jumps above a stronger area of high pressure in the Pacific. So you can typically expect it to dip down as it cuts into the U.S. here. And as it dives farther south, you expect that colder air to dive a bit farther south with it. And that adjustment is more likely to play out this year um, across the north central U.S. and the northwestern U.S. Um, so that would you know, be suggestive of the jet stream taking a path sort of like that. Uh, but the jet stream always corrects. And that's why you're seeing on our chart here and in the forecast from the Climate Prediction Center, the warmer than average weather expected in the south and up the east coast as well. So again, you can I'm kind of highlighting those areas from the Climate Prediction Center. Your jet stream, it's going to be a little bit off from what we're seeing on this um, diagram here, but the jet stream may be kind of jiving like that dominantly this winter. It's not going to stay like that. Jet stream moves all the time, but that correction uh, leads the warmer air to become more present, not only in the south, but up the east coast with this given forecast. You've also noticed uh, in our diagram here, you typically see drier than average conditions in the south. That is right on par with the Climate Prediction Center's uh, outlook. And the wetter than average weather in the Great Lakes region and in the northwest, again, right on par with that forecast from the CPC. So you can kind of get where they're making their projections from. And um, certainly in La Nina years, 
uh, these are usually good snow years for more northern states relative to average, and it can be quite difficult to see any snow in the south. But I can also show you the typical anomalies in terms of snowfall, and this is pretty revealing here. You remember you saw that colder than average weather in the northwest, the higher than average precipitation. Uh, this can be excellent for mountains out there. And everywhere you're seeing those dark sort of uh, teal colors out here in the northwest, those are the mountains uh, through British Columbia, even into Alberta and across the northwestern U.S. Um, again, this can be great for snow in those mountains. And uh, likewise, it can be great for um, areas experiencing drought conditions out there too once we get to the spring. Once that snow melts, you get a lot of water. Uh, but as a whole, you're seeing the greatest snowfall anomalies out there, a lot more than average. Um, also, in some of these mountains, you can see a little bit farther to the south and, uh, and west here, um, you know, even it's like the Sierra Nevadas out there, you're seeing less snow forecasted relative to average, just based on history here. This is all just historical in La Nina years, what has happened in the past. But as we look farther east, while the anomalies are not as significant, and that's because you know, mountains get more snow. So uh, a less snowy winter for mountains might be, you know, feet less versus areas that maybe see a couple of feet per year that might be more like inches less. That's why you're seeing the brightest colors in the mountains. But what really stands out here is that we have this anomaly that sort of goes like this. Um, and that line I just drew separates a lot of the northern U.S. from the southern U.S. And what really stands out to me is, especially as we get to the east coast, similar to what we saw from the Climate Prediction Center, you begin to see a, a sort of less snow than average um, relative to areas to the west where you can kind of get that snow line to head farther south. So again, relative to our average, what we're seeing here is the expectation for more snow across most of the northern U.S., given the forecast from the Climate Prediction Center and what we typically see in La Nina years. In the southern U.S., you're seeing drier than average conditions and up the east coast, uh, I shouldn't say drier, but that is the case, and in the east coast, we're seeing less snow than average out there too, likely because those temperatures are usually a bit warmer. So when I'm looking at this forecast, I'm thinking, you know, if I'm in the north central U.S., this could be a great year. If I'm in the northwest, this could be a great year. If I'm in New England, that's sort of a battleground. You know, those coastlines, especially with how warm the ocean has been, don't look great if you're hoping for a snowy winter. Um, of course, out there, you only need one storm to tip the scales, but certainly I wouldn't be leaning that direction right now. Ski country, though, in the northeast, looks a bit better out there for sure, and into Canada too. Uh, but really, if you're in the southern U.S., this may be one of those years where you don't see anything, depending on how far south you are. If you're in the northern U.S., this may be one of those years that makes up for uh, several years that have lacked a lot of snowfall. And for the northeast, you know, Boston, for example, has just gone through back-to-back uh, -back least snowy winter, uh, or sorry, the last two winters in Boston back-to-back -back have been the least snowy two-year window ever. Um, you know, this is one of those where the scales still don't seem to be tipping in favor of snow, but if we can get any storm systems to spin up the East Coast and dump on us, that would certainly, again, tip these scales. Uh, I'll say personally, um, I don't put a ton of stock into seasonal forecasting because all it takes is one storm to tip the scales, but this really gives you a good idea of what is at least more likely where you live. So if you want snow and you're in a place where we're not looking at much, you still got a chance. And likewise, the other way around for areas uh, that are expected to see more snow. But at the end of the day, um, I'll tell you also, based on everything I've looked at, it looks as though, we haven't seen this much recently, the front end of winter may be more um, primed for snowfall than the back end. There is just a weak signal on that too. Uh, but these are all things that we'll be monitoring through the winter. And of course, you want to check back as we uh, keep you updated weekly with forecasts right here. But Hopefully that gives you an idea of what you may be in for as we move into this upcoming winter. Hope it's a snowy one if you like that. And if you don't, well, I hope you don't live where I am because I love the snow. Have a good one, guys.